I own a first generation Scion TC, it's a 2005, uh, and I think it's a really fucking good car. Parts on it aren't too expensive, it's a Toyota, it's got the 2A in it, it's just a really good overall car. It It's a, it's a bigger displacement four cylinder, uh, a 2.4 liter to be exact, and it makes pretty decent power and pretty decent torque. So it's it's good. It's a good engine. It pulls pretty good. You know, nothing crazy. Obviously not winning any, uh, you know, record awards or whatever with it. But it's just a good car. I recently took it to the racetrack. And I was able to, like, pretty much just take it as is in stock form and do completely well. I'm not an experienced driver in any way. Um, at all. I've only done like six or seven track days um, trying to get more under my belt. But it's, I was at the track with people that have had similar time or similar experience with me on the track. And to be honest, that car, minus driver mod obviously, outperformed a lot of the cars that were there for pretty much not even a fraction of the cost, like way less. Everybody else who was there had cars that ranged from like $20,000 plus. Yeah, there are always those like shitbox beater cars just like mine where I take them and drive them. But, you know, GR86s and BRZs and Audi A3s and Golf GTIs. I know a lot of it's driver mod and I know uh, the car's outright ultimate potential could probably totally just decimate mine. But especially for just a beginner car the car is good it does what it needs to do and it doesn't really have a fuss about it like it just kind of gets down and dirty with the rest of everyone and you can just kind of be different people actually think that like you know scion tcs are like not able to you know be up to to par with all these other cars like the modern day car community, everyone is the same. Uh, I got a WRX, I got a Focus ST or, or whatever, and uh, or I have a GTI or a Golf R, and uh, everyone's got a GR86 or a GT86, or, you know, I don't know. Like I even see more supercars in the car community today than I ever have before. You know, I feel like there's no more of the cooler, low-key, chill, uh, cheaper aspect of the community um, that are going to track days anymore. Uh, everybody kind of just drives really expensive dailies. And um, there are a couple like track, track cars, like there's a lot of Miatas and stuff, which are pretty normal. But I don't see any kind of creativity um, at the racetrack at all. I do see a couple 3 Series BMWs or or not, maybe not 3 Series, but older 80s uh, style BMWs that people do all up as a race cars and stuff. But I don't see a whole lot of creativity in the car um, difference department. Everyone drives the same car. So I kind of do stick out like a sore thumb in a sense, but not really because at the end of the day, it's just a Toyota. But for what the car is, it's really good at what it does. You can put just tires on it and a good set of brakes and you can hit the track and have a complete blast and it will work perfectly fine for you. You will have no issues. The car will give you no fuss. Now, like I said before, are you gonna be winning any records or championships with the car? Probably not. But at the end of the day, you know, if you're just trying to have fun and you can also try and go as fast as possible, there's no rule that says you can't. A lot of people at the track for some reason think that it's stupid to go as fast as possible at the racetrack because you feel like they, if you push that limit um, of no return, like I know a couple people that think that it's kind of dumb to push and go all out at the racetrack. I'm going to be honest, I beg to differ. I think if you want to push your limits and go as fast as possible, um, obviously you are increasing the chances of getting in an accident, but that's kind of why you're there is not to get an accident, but to kind of go as fast as possible. So if you know, you're looking for a cheap car to do that in a Scion TC will work for the past like four years, 
four years I've been looking for a 85, uh, 86 uh, SR5 Corolla. AE86, obviously in America it's not an AE86, but it's the same car more or less. I can't find one for less than $8,000. And the ones that are $8,000 are automatics. They're the 4AC engine, which I don't actually mind. I actually think the 4AC is a cool engine. I'm, so I'm, I'm, I'm completely okay with carburetors. I love weird, quirky stuff like that. Uh, or maybe not quirky, just weird. Or maybe not even weird. I just like stuff like that. Um, but... It's like crazy, like you have all these people posting them on Facebook Marketplace that are, and then they're beat to shit. They got random wheels on it that make them look ugly and mismatch body panels that they never bothered painting. Some of them have engines with no transmission. Some of them have, have transmissions with no engine. One has no trunk lid for some reason. One's fully built race car, but with no engine. $8,000, $10,000, $15,000. I saw one for $20,000 OBL, like... For a Corolla, people, for a Corolla. It is a AE86 Toyota Corolla. It makes 140 horsepower, if that. Maybe, if it's tuned, maybe. But geez, people have gone mad on Facebook Marketplace. So, what was my alternative? I was looking for another car. I was looking for a, a 2003 to 2005 Toyota Celica GTS. The reason why it's 03 to 05 and not 2000 to 2005 is because from 2000 to 2003, a lot of the Toyota engines had a lot of oil uh, consumption problems. The 2ZZs had a lot of problems. Um, and even the 1ZZs had a lot of problems. I would have settled for a GT but I couldn't find one. And they, and those Celicas were really expensive too. $4,000, $5,000, $6,000 for a piece of shit. An absolute piece of shit. Cars that like had random problems or rotted and just, just terrible. One of the guys I saw had the whole thing rhino lined, the whole car. And it was completely just fucked. And he sprayed rhino liner all over the car. And he was asking for $7,000. And it was a GT. It wasn't even a GTS. These guys are on crack. Because it's just not worth that much money. I don't care who tells you. It's just not. But unfortunately, there are people that are going to buy stupid things like that. So, what was my options? I was looking at horsepower. I was looking at transmission gear ratios. I was looking at curb weight and gross weight. And I found a happy medium. I couldn't get my 8.6, I couldn't get my Celica GT or GTS, but then there's kind of this car that's right in the middle. Obviously not in the middle comparison, a comparison of a Celica and a Corolla, but comparing a Celica GT to a GTS. This car was kind of in the hot spot. The gear ratios on the transmissions were, on the transmission was literally kind of in between and better than a GT, but maybe not as good as a GTS six speed. And the horsepower was exactly in between. You know, like a one ZZ out of a GT probably makes like 120 horsepower to the wheels or whatever, maybe if that. And the GTS makes like 170, 180, 190 in that ballpark area. And the Scion TC makes like 150, 160, maybe high 130s or somewhere around that area. The, the weight, it was a little bit heavy. It was a little bit heavier. Um, the wheelbase was a tiny, tiny bit shorter, if I'm not mistaken. It was just a good car. It had disc brakes all the way around, which is a benefit over the Celica GT, which had drum brakes in the rear, and the GTS had discs all the way around. It's a five-speed, you know, and it's a 2.4, so bigger displacement, more torques, yada, yada. Um, good car. Really good car. Comes with 17s, you can put 225s on the stock rim size without having any uh, over uh, sidewall deflection or just a, an overhanging tire uh, over your rim. So it fits those tires pretty well. You could probably do a 235, um, but maybe you'll start rubbing at that point. I don't know. Mine came with lowering springs, some generic brand. They're all rusty, so I don't even know what kind of brand they are, but it was from the previous owner. And all I did was slap a set of Indy 500s I got at my old job 
for like 50% off. Uh, so they're a 340 Treadwear tire. I slapped a set of those on there. I put a set of EBC uh, yellow stuff pads on the front, which is really all you need. And that's it. And I went to the track and I had an absolute blast. I did put a header on the car because the catalytic converter was rusted and uh, whatever, I don't care. I'll figure out a way to get it past the emissions. But I just think, I just think that um, the car is just ultimately good as it is. Like there's not a whole lot you need to do with it. You know, it's a good baseline car. I just ordered a set of Raceland coilovers for it. I was gonna get BCs, but obviously you're just getting into the expensive range. Um, I was looking at a lot of eBay coils for $200, $300, um, but I was noticing a lot of problems with them. So I just went with the Racelands. They were lifetime warranty. So if one breaks or starts leaking, whatever, I can just replace them. So no problem. I'd rather do that. Um, there's tons of modification options you can do with those cars, like absolute tons. And you can buy standalone plug and play ECUs for the car. So if you ever wanted to tune the car, or do something with it, you can just go outright buy them. Yes, now you're bordering expensive range, but you can just ultimately buy them. You know, maybe, just maybe, like, don't bring any attention to these cars in a sense of where they're going to spike up in value because right now they're sitting at $3,000, $2,000. I haven't seen one super over three, maybe like 3,500, closer to four, not really at four. I haven't seen too many unless they're in immaculate condition. Um, but I got mine with like 197,000 miles on it, but you couldn't really tell. Uh, mine's in really good shape and it runs really good. So the engine purrs, and it's completely fine. And it's got probably another 100,000 in it if I take it to the track and daily it normally. Um, but who knows? Um, yeah, so uh, my clutch is probably done at some point too because the car just feels good. The car is just ultimately, they're, they're just good cars. So if you want to go to the track and you want just good cars in general, you know, think about getting a Scion TC. There's, they're just good, you know? You can go buy your, you know, $7,000 track monster that's already built. And I say $7,000 as in like, you know, a 350Z because everyone like, you know what though, actually, I don't even see anybody at the track driving 350Zs. The, the culture around uh, the track, racetracks nowadays, nobody's driving anything wacky or anything original anymore like i'm not like i see a couple of integra guys every once in a while but no one's driving the egs anymore or the eks or the integras or or uh rx7s like nobody's driving those cars anymore for some reason on the racetrack people just want cars that are done um and ready to go on the track nobody is creative at all like yeah there's all there's all c5 corvettes and brand new camaro ss's and Mustangs, and that's fine. You can drive whatever you want. There was one guy who I saw who had a Genesis, and he was pretty cool. I, I mean, I didn't talk to him, but his car looked pretty cool. That's somewhat original. Like, that's cool. But everyone else is very cookie cutter. So if you want to stand out and also whoop some people at the same time, get a TC, because you probably can. You know, they're good cars. They don't make a whole lot of power. As long as you keep your foot on the gas and you've got some driver mod under your belt, you can probably whoop a lot of people in them. So, I mean, take everything I say with a grain of salt, obviously. You can always just do what you want to do at the end of the day. But, I mean, give these cars a try. Like, the next car I want for a, a track car or a race car, first I want a house. But obviously we all know what the economy is right now. And I can't buy a house right now. But, and I want to do that so I can fix my Celica and, and turn that into a fully whatever handmade race car. Um, obviously I can't do that right now just because of whatever the, the world, but I'm, I'm working hard. Uh, but I have the Scion as a backup so I can do stuff like that. And one day, I mean, I want like a 94 Corolla, like with the 7A in it. And you can turn that into a crazy track car. Like there's so many cars available to people to, for, to go racing with, but everyone thinks, they need to have the best thing possible to go racing. I remember when I first started going to the track 
and me and this other beginner driver, we were both beginners, right? I was driving my Celica. He was driving a brand new at the time. It was probably like a 2018, 2019 Civic Type R. Car is a monster. My car was stock. His car was stock. And I was absolutely destroying him. Yes, you can say driver mod 100% because if you put a professional driver behind that wheel, that Type R, you bet your ass he's probably going to beat my ass. But at the same time, it just goes to show that just because a car is older doesn't mean it's a bad car. You can still keep up. You can still hang with the 400 horsepower people. You get a set of decent tires. You get a set of decent brakes and some just decent suspension. And you can go out there and actually compete with some people. It's definitely 110% possible. And you don't need to spend a, a heck ton of money. You really don't. You can set up your car in any way that you want, make it look any way that you want. A lot of the times, I mean, nowadays, like this is just the way I think. A lot of the, the time, the car community nowadays is full of the cob tuners and the, um, the, oh, I got this muffler exhaust cap back on my car. What do you have? And it's like, yeah, it's fun and games to talk about all that stuff, but it gets to the point where it's taken away some of the creativity aspect. That's why I bought my Scion, to be a little bit different. And it's just because it's really what I like. I don't like other cars other than that. It's in my price range. It does what it needs to do. Parts are cheap. It, I can drive it whenever and wherever I want. That's the best part. Like, you can do whatever you want. Other cars... They're just, newer cars feel like they're done, you know? Maybe in 20 years they won't, but right now, new cars feel like they're already modified, especially for beginner people. I'm still a beginner person. So there's not much you want to do, or there's not much you can do, especially with the amount of money everybody has now, right now, nowadays. So just take what you have, and I know everybody already probably knows this, you know, go out, buy a Scion TC, or buy some cheap beater car. Hell, you can even get a Saturn Ion for all I care. Just get something, go have some fun, be creative, and just have some passion in it. And and just enjoy the car and for what it is. And uh, And yeah, that's really about it. See ya.